All right, YouTube, welcome. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'm Leak Auto Repair, and welcome to a segment of, uh, we're going to be teaching you guys how to uh, do your oil pan, uh, gasket replacement, and your E90. This is a 2011 BMW uh, 328XI all-wheel drive, so this is good. I'm not giving you the one with their, just the rear. I'm giving you the one with the uh, all-wheel drive setup, so exactly know what to do so first thing i'm doing i'm setting up i'm using my harbor freight engine support bar and i'm hooking it up to the engine supporting it there's a tow hook in the back of your car that you use for you know you screw in the front of your front bumper with the access hole you're going to take that and then you're going to screw it into the top of the cylinder head right by to the left of the oil filter housing and if you bmw savvy you know what i'm talking about so i'm pretty that i'm using that just the uh the hook just to hang the engine and that's all you need i'm glad they come with that and that's that and if I could find my um lighter I don't like my L up y'all know I do these voiceovers um but my L here it go right here and everything if you follow this video I mean with a helper of course I don't need a helper but you're gonna need a helper um you're gonna be all right and you're making out in your mom's driveway just because I said so I mean you could be in your grandpa's driveway who knows I don't know you in your own driveway whatever this can be done um, maybe it's a little bit longer because without the lift, but me, I think I can do them uh, just as fast anyway. So I'm just tightening down my um, my um, support bar, make sure it's sturdy, make sure it's not sloppy. Um, you're gonna take your wheels off. If you can't get the wheels off, then this job ain't for you. You know how many hot, how many jobs I tell people that if you cannot do take the wheel off, you cannot do this job. How can you complete a job like this if you can't do something simple as backing out uh lug nuts so let me go ahead and um uh, hit my l and y'all should be thankful i'm gonna get my cash app too y'all should be thankful i'm doing this and i'm gonna be selling it y'all want the guy for this i'm gonna leave details in the end of the video because i'm gonna sell this as a, a whole removal guide so there's two three 10 millimeter bolts uh there's a coolant um plastic coolant line that run um uh Underneath the uh, the sway bar link and there is a I think there's a power steering cooler Hose uh, it goes in the s farm. It could be power steering or transmission But I believe it's power steering and um, you see how I'm moving that to two tens off There is one more 10 that lies on a frame. So it's basically a total of Four 10 millimeter bolts on very front of the frame you're going to be removing I already moved the two and then as you can see uh, just above the top of the uh, where this power steering uh, what a rack is if you go up you probably can't even see but it's there you should be able to see if you pause the video and zoom you'll see what i'm doing and i'm taking off the 10 millimeter bolt i want i'm taking them off because i want the coolant line to be able to to move not be in my way and you don't need to disconnect no holes you don't need to do nothing if you do what i said you won't lose no coolant I've done this job plenty of times where I did lose coolant. It's just a couple variations, a um, couple different scenarios. Why? We're not going to get into that. But this one, if everything's straightforward, you shouldn't have to uh, lose coolant. As long as you don't damage, fracture, whatever, don't damage the coolant line, plastic coolant line. And um, let me hit my L. And I'm still taking it out. It's going to be a pain in the ass getting them out. It's tight spots, but if you get in there with like uh, something with a flex head. Uh, flex here ratchet flex here ratchet wrench you'll be good uh getting it out and just back it off a few and it should like finish uh hand spinning you can spin it out basically is what i uh was trying to say and um i guess uh we're gonna wait till i figure out uh um, what we're gonna be doing next um i did this i got part two already filmed part two is gonna come out right after this so stay tuned and i'm kind of happy about this because i get to show people um there's nobody on youtube showing how to remove it on the e90 and i'm be the first one to show it they got it on other models and shit other years but the e90 though i got you so next uh that cooler line that runs in the s and it's got like a, a bracket on it like a three bolt nut bracket set up you can see what my hand is if you look up right on top, you will be able to see that there is a 10 millimeter bolt. Now this 10 millimeter bolt for that bracket for the cooler line, you won't be able to get to. You can sneak in there, but the best way to get to it is you're gonna have to drop down your uh, sway bar uh, right off of the uh, subframe. But I guess I'm being stupid and 
sometimes my order always different every time I do this job. Sometimes my order ain't that bad, but obviously I didn't follow my last order. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've done this oil paying gasket job. I know exactly everything to take off by heart, and that's why everything is always smooth sailing for me. So let me go ahead and take my puff. Hold on, I gotta light it again. And some of these bolts, like I said, you're gonna have to keep ratcheting it in until it get real loose, and you can sneak in there with your two fingers and um, back them out. It can speed up the process. But other than that, it's gonna be slow ratcheting for you. So hold on. All right, that's the bracket I was telling you about for the cooler lot that's loose. So I y'all wiggled it. You know exactly which what I'm talking about. And of course, you won't be able to see. I mean, it's a weird ass camera angle. You should not expect me to show you exactly what needs to come off. You should be thankful that I did this removal guide for you. So it all comes down to common sense. If you ain't got common sense, then uh, this video ain't for you. So I'm still fiddling with it, and I realize I can't get it out probably after a second or two. And that's when I'll take on my 3 8 gun and a 13 millimeter uh, size. Uh, 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 I can't even say it. Socket. And there are a pair of 13 millimeter bolts on both sides of the uh, sway bar where the uh, bracket uh, lines up to. Uh, you're going to take those off and make sure you keep everything in order. That way you don't care how to. I'm can't even about to curse. I don't care how you do it. Just make sure you, you know don't lose nothing you lose stuff that, that's gonna be your ass so now that I got the sway bar link not the sway bar link but the whole sway bar itself it's movable I got the link still connected to the strut that we're not worrying about we're not worrying about that you shouldn't have to touch that in the first place and now that I got the the bar movable and it can drop down now I got access to get to that 10 millimeter bolt and you should be able to see it a hell of a lot better now and I probably couldn't show you on this camera angle but you use your common sense you know what area I'm in you know what the hell I'm talking about because I'm telling you what needs to come off and I don't even know how long this video is uh, probably like a quarter of the way it could be 20 some minutes long who knows I don't know but it is what it is more watch time for me right let me take a puff hold on how many y'all leave it in the comment section who spoke who, who, who spoke I ain't talking about those cigarettes. I ain't talking about no crack either. I'm talking about that bud, bud. Who smoke, smoke, smoke? Got that fire. Leave it in the comment section. Let me know what you smoke. And then I got the bracket out the way. And then now the sway bar should be able to drop down. It literally is going to hang down. And should be able to do it in a second. I don't know what the hell's going on. You got to move these lines out the way. BMW is just... Y'all yeah, I mean, Y'all making mechanics like a whole lot hard. I don't know why y'all like that. I think I was looking for a 10 millimeter bolt that fell, but then I ended up finding it uh, after the, I got the frame out. And all bolts are accounted for. I never leave a bolt missing on a job like this because I know exactly what's supposed to come off. They don't tell you the steps and the repair steps to do this. I'm telling you the steps. So next, I'm taking off my uh, tie rod. Uh, there is a 24 millimeter uh, uh i think it's 24 24 millimeter socket and i'm using my earthquake uh from harbor freights it just gets the job done you got milwaukee the wall all of that i don't care what you got as long as you gotta have thank you gucci and i'm gonna do the other side what you doing one side you doing the other side you really can't mess up so I shouldn't have to show you me backing it out on this side. I shouldn't even have to up this side in the first place. But y'all lucky I like y'all. Now after I do that, now some people like to use the tie rod tool to get it out. Me, I don't. I use a hammer. That's my tool. So you don't like my method, then I really don't care. You can go to anybody else's channel. You give it about four or five waxes. Sometimes it comes free. Sometimes you're not striking it right. But it usually if you hit the knuckle not the tie rod itself you can get it to back out on its own and that should be able to drop down bam got to drop down and uh who cares if you nick the knuckle anyway long as you don't damage it uh I'm trying to figure out, oh i'm taking off the uh the basically both lower control arms the low control arm and there's a lateral arm too i'm taking off the low control arm one and you can lift up on a rack uh the reason why I oh I forgot to tell you guys to unbolt 
Uh, I didn't even show that part. To unbolt the rack, there's a uh, inverted Torx and then a 16 millimeter uh, head on top. Uh, just, you just need to take those off because you need to be able to lift that rack up so that way you can get your bolts out for your little control arm make a slide out the other end. And that's the only reason you need to take those bolts off. Other than that, you shouldn't uh, really have to. Uh, you, I don't know, going back in, I didn't have that problem. I had the, bolt, uh, the, the rack bolted in, so I guess whichever helps you out. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to take out the rack bolts, but I did that anyway so I could lift up on a rack to get the uh, the bolt out. Maybe it was in my way, but it's been a minute since I did this job, but like I said, I've done this job a crap load of times. Now I'm taking off some shields that cover the uh, rear wheel, rearward arm, or not a lateral arm, maybe I was saying it ran wrong in the first place, but this is a rear rearward arm. I don't know why they say it's so stupid. Um, this one is an 18, both low, low control arm and rear work arm are uh, got nut and bolt set up with 18 millimeter nut on one side and bolt on the other side and you get in there with like a ratchet and you Gucci also these shields is uh, held in by 8 millimeter uh, size bolts and then um, you got a couple plastic pins and they just screws really and um, I think I'm working off the nut is on the inside. You can't fish the bolt in from the inside because you won't be able to get it out. So you got to do it from the outside. You can pull it out from the outside. That's why I moved that shield out the way. So that way I can slide it back with ease. So um, they're not like tight as hell. You got to like break your neck to get it free. And these bolts wasn't even like rusty because obviously you had all the plastic shields um, on. If you don't got all your shields on your engine, like underneath I can imagine what what it could look like underneath or what boats could be like rusted or what's one what part is gonna be a pain in the ass coming off because you didn't cover the end of the carriage. That's why they put those there for a reason. I guess I was able to get the nut out. Um or maybe I didn't. Uh, as you can see I got two ratchets, uh ratchet wrenches, one of them flex head and the other one is just regular ratchet blue point is it is offset i prefer offset i don't like ratchet wrenches that's not all set offset or uh or at least flexible with angle you can't get good angles if it's not offset to me or at least flexible so no i don't own a ratchet wrench that's not flexible and or offset now i'm getting a pry bar and i had just wedge it out a little bit and see how easy it comes out if you got a hard time of uh, the boat coming out all you got to do is wiggle on the uh, arm and you should be able to get some type of plane there where it moves and they're both arms the boat nuts are the same they're like identical unless you want to be that dude to mark your boat you can but you can't mess up by putting mixing the bolts up and put them in the, the wrong spot arm they're both the same size 18 millimeter and then they move out easily just use your pry bar and wedge them out they come out good now next I'm taking off uh, my axle nuts. The axle nuts are 33 uh, millimeters, a half inch deep socket. Um, this one is a 12 point and you need 12 point. And I remember buying this because I needed it. I had, I had 33, 12, I mean six point, I ain't had 12, you need 12. So using my earthquake gun, my earthquake gun budges it off, no problem. I don't have no problem, period. If you're looking to get this gun, you need to know how it is. I reviewed it. Um, only thing you got to do is just Google the earthquake uh, gun review on YouTube. And I got an older video I did some years ago, and uh, demonstrate uh, its use. That's why you know I mess with this gun. If I need it. I need it. I ain't going out spending all this little X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? So next, I'm using a chisel with a pointy tip. Not a pointy tip, but a, a pointed tip. And I'm just pressing out the center of the uh, axle. Um, the best way to drive an axle out of a hub only if it has, uh, 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 only if it's pre hold for it to be, uh, you know, air, like, you know, for the air hammer, you see like a little center is already center punched already, basically. You know what I'm talking about. If it don't got that, don't, don't do it. I only do it because they already tap them in there for me to do it. So it's a nice trick of getting axes out of the hub. So that way I ain't got to be that guy putting the screw on and hitting it with a hammer. Now, if I don't have to do it, I'm not doing it. So backing it out real good. And all I got to do is put a, pull the hub towards you out. And this axle 
uh, will come out cool. Be careful on pulling it. You don't want to bend. Yeah, splash shell. Be careful on these arms being. Um, I'm not not splash. I'm in dust shell. Be careful on um, when you, with the dust shell too. You can bend that on a rotor and it be scraping at the way you're trying to figure out what's what. Just be careful. Make sure it's straight. Oh, I'm taking off the uh, inverted torques for the steering. Uh, is a steering shaft that goes into the steering rack. Uh, taking that off. And after you get that off, uh, it's always taking your steering shaft is going to be a pain in the ass separated from the rack. The reason you got to take it off because the rack is coming down. You're not leaving the rack, and it's impossible to leave the rack in there. And, and it, it, it's just not like a regular setup where you can keep the rack in the car, bolt it to the hub. It's not like that. So I'm taking the seat belt and I'm looping it through the wheel, and uh, that's why I'm moving the seat forward and just latching it up because. The reason why I do this is because I don't want the steering wheel to overspin and you only get so many turns, so many full turns before uh, you can destroy the clock spring or spiral cord. And you never had a spiral cord break before. I never had one break on me, but I don't want one to be the first. Just, just be careful. Uh, next, I'm taking off the 16 millimeter nut that goes on top of the engine mount. Don't worry about doing it from the bottom on the passenger side. You got access to get it out from the top if you can reach the skinny ass arms down there like I can, or you can just get in there with a magnet, you Gucci. That's gonna be your best bet if you got big ass arms. Like my arms ain't like small, but at the same time, I'm not like I can get in tight crevices and shit. Like I'm not like big at all. Like like fat wise and shit. And in a good way. I don't give a I mean, I don't really don't care if you think I'm talking about your health, but it's either you're gonna be healthy or not. You know what I'm saying? So next I'm taking off, there's another inverted torque, uh, two of them at the bottom on the driver's side you get from the bottom, you really, it's hard to see them top, to get the top nut on the top, but you can access them through the bottom because they make it accessible at the bottom on the driver's side. So next I like wood, whatever wood is there, I'm cutting it up and I'm pretty much fabricating something. I need a, basically, um, something to... Uh, hold the drive. I mean the uh, the subframe basically like a subframe holder. That's what I call it So I need some wood. It could be as it could be like uh, a 5 by a 5 by 2 or a 4 by 2 I don't know whatever it is Longest I use it just the, as a balance beam just one is on a trans jack and You see my videos the way I do engines transmissions and the way I did see I got this set up right here exactly how I do my work but this time I got it shimmed up because I had cut it too long so I had spaced it out at the bottom which worked out cool but as long as I was touching the subframe I was Gucci and all that, like I said I could balance the subframe easily with just one four by two and that's it um next I'm uh I'm taking a pry bar a striking pry bar and you're gonna basically if you can get a uh, uh, wherever you can strike it that's safely in a safe spot, strike uh, just basically whack tap off the uh, the steering shaft from separated from the steering rack. That's going to be hard because how many times has this steering shaft been out for it to slide out with ease? Right? It's been years. It's probably never been out before, so it's still clamped on with with force, with tension. I mean when you take it off still when take the boat out so that's why you know you want to get in there with some more force like some muscle hit it with the pry bar and the hammer you gucci so i got it wedged up a little bit and it was still tight it's there the shaft is telescopic by the way you should be able to push it back into the uh firewall the bulkhead or whatever you want to call it you won't be able to push it back all the way but you will be able to get it to move um i went in there with a bigger pry bar and i had uh striked it in a couple spots where I can get it to wedge off and that was good if it don't work for you then you might have to use an air hammer and find a safe spot to, to, to hit the air use the air hammer on because it is like aluminum it ain't metal the steering shaft at least the joint is um, you could damage it but your goal is to get it off without destroying it so that's what you need to be worrying about. You asked to, you type this video up. You wanted to know how to do it. This comes with the territory. If you crying about how you can't get the steering shaft, that probably would be your hardest part of the job. I'm not even lying. I'm not lying. It might be the hardest part of the job 
is taking the steering shaft off. It could be other hard parts of this job, but this is one of them for sure. So, uh, I guess, what am I? I got it off. I did get it off. Next, I'm taking off my subframe bolts. Subframe bolts, there are three on both sides. A uh, 16 millimeter uh, uh, bolt, basically. I went in there with an extension and my earthquake again and backing them out. And make sure you got your trans jack properly set up so that when you take the bolts out, the subframes will just fall out. I want it to come down the minute I release it, uh, you know, release it down from off of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I can't even think right now, the, uh, the transmission jack. So, backing that out. And two of them are the same size on one side, and then you got one that's just smaller. The dummy proof really can't mix them up. Uh, mess them up. If you, if you mix the bolts up, then you really can't mess up. Everything's self-explanatory. The back ones are small, like I said. And then I just got to get one more. And part two will be more intricate. At least I can cover on finish, uh, you know, dropping out the paint in part two. But this one, this is what you got to go through to get the... Uh, the subframe out just to get to the pan and there's more stuff after this that's going to be shown in part two so make sure you watch part two i think i was cut myself or something and i was seeing if i was bleeding or anything so i'm repositioning um everything make sure it's gucci i did lower it down some see how i was able to move so now when this subframe is coming down you need to be careful uh don't be damaging no hoses anything that's plastic anything that's brittle wires whatever be careful coming down it needs to come it needs to drop down not like you gotta like force it out it needs loop you gotta move stuff out the way i don't care what you move out the way long as it drops down it only goes up and down so move whatever you can out your way and then proceed with dropping it down every time you drop it down and it don't come out it's because your stuff so connected so i dropped it down enough whereas i can see there are two bolts uh, banjo bolts on the steering rack that you're going to take off. One of them is a 24 millimeter bolt and the other one is a 19. I used a gun to hit them off. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, this, a note for you to remember. Uh, there are washers. It's like the banjo bolt on your brake calipers. There are washers on both sides of the bolt. One on the mating surface and one on the mating surface of the bolt. Um, you want to make sure you catch the two that's going to come out of the two bolts basically. There's going to be ones already on the boat. I leave the boats in the line. They don't fall out. But unless I want them, you want to take them out, take them out. You can't mess them up. they both two different sizes. Catch your washers after you back off both boats, banjo boats, and you're going to be Gucci. You don't catch your washers, you lose them, whatever the case is, hard to find, and you're going to be at the dealership getting another one. And you need those banjo boats. Unless you got universal ones, you can match them. You can do whatever it is you want to do. I don't, I don't care. Don't lose your washers for your banjo bolts. That's what you need to be writing down right now. I don't care. Write it down. Remember it. Screenshot it. All that. Whatever. And I guess I'm still making sure everything Gucci. I'm losing power steering fluid too. Um, I will leave you a list in the description on what you need to be partially going to be needing for this job. It's uh, really simple. And uh, what am I doing? Oh, wiping the oil off my uh, tools. And now I got all this uh, shit dripping and I'm going to continue to move uh, stuff out the way. See the my washers I was telling you about? Sometimes they was uh, still bonded to the surface of the rack. Where you can just pick at, them, pick at them with your fingernails and lick them off. So that was my case and it worked. So now I'm dropping. Maybe I have better lighting next time too. I want to drop down, uh, moving it out the way, dropping down. Everything should... The, the, the suffering shit drops down and shit didn't have to almost fall out, you know, coming out. You get what I'm saying? If it got to come out that way, that means you messing shit up. Make sure nothing is hanging up on it coming down. Notice how I got the axle still in the place, so I got the suspension in the place. Some people take off their suspension different. Some people take them off by, like, the ball joint in. I don't do that. Just, just me. If you do it my way, my way is faster. And people always try to tell me. And yeah, that's how you do the job, basically. But people always tell me what to take off, what to do, X, Y, and Z. And these people that say this, a majority of the people that make any reference on anything I, I ever do, you don't work faster than me. So you telling me your way 
It could be smarter. Your way could be. How can your way make sense if I'm faster than you? So obviously my way is more effective. And that's just how I work. So I'm going to go to repair. Uh, make sure y'all look out for part two. Um, if you. I want to maybe. I'm thinking about releasing this in, in, in pieces. I don't know. Whatever. I, w I do want to sell this. But overall you know what. I'm going to just go ahead and put it on youtube and just monetize it regularly anything else from here on out you guys gonna have to pay for like separately because this exclusive information so look out for part two hit the like button